machine learning is possibly the great computational success story of the 21st century. Um, and it certainly progressed in leaps and bounds. It is very widely used. Uh, all of the major tech companies, companies like uh, Apple and Google, uh, Facebook and Amazon, uh, all uh, depend very heavily on machine learning technology and it underpins many of their products, products like Siri and Alexa. It's also very widely talked about. Everybody uh, is constantly reading stories, publishing press releases about the fabulous new machine learning technology. The progress that's been made as a result of increased data availability, uh, computational hardware improvements, in particular graphics hardware, um, that enables uh, fast linear algebraic processing, uh, and also algorithmic improvements in recent years have enabled uh, machine learning to achieve great things um, to the extent that we kind of take a lot of that for granted. Um, partly because it's so widely used uh, and used in companies that, uh, whose products uh, pervade our lives in the age of social media, it has taken on a degree of uh, cultural relevance as well as technological uh, and is widely discussed in terms of the potential threats that it might pose to, to privacy and perhaps in more fanciful terms to human life as, uh, as intelligent systems uh, come to take over the world. In the context of that last example, it's worth uh, thinking about what machine learning isn't, certainly from the point of view of this module. So one of the things that machine learning is not is artificial intelligence. The two are certainly related and they have overlaps and have proceeded uh, in parallel over many years. Um, but their goals are somewhat different. Certainly machine learning is important to artificial intelligence, uh, but the goal of machine learning is usually not to create general intelligences that understand things, but to solve specific, well-defined tasks. Provocatively, one might say that machine learning is the bit of artificial intelligence that actually works. Another thing uh, that it's not is it's not magic. So the things that it does uh, are sometimes extremely impressive, but they're not to be mistaken for actual understanding. Machine learning systems are not, probably, assuming I'm not just being wildly complacent about this, uh, are not about to become conscious and destroy us all in a robot apocalypse. More prosaically, we might say that uh, machine learning is a set of tools, and they're not always the right tools for the job. So they're good for well-defined questions where a reasonable amount of data is available, but they're definitely not good for abstract reasoning. One of the things that it's important to avoid is the human trap of attributing understanding and consciousness to the models that we build. People know that they are conscious, they have a theory of mind about the consciousness of other people, and they tend to attribute uh, agency uh, not only to other people, but to inanimate objects. Um, whereas machine learning models, this is definitely not the case. The things that they are doing is solving specific problems. And we might look at the well, think problems that they're solving and think, oh, if I was solving that problem, it would mean I understood something. That's never the case in the case of machine learning, so something important to bear in mind. So that's some of the things that machine learning is not. What actually is it? Essentially, machine learning is a collection of techniques, say a toolbox, of different ways of making it possible to have program behavior uh, determined by data. Now, hang on a second. Isn't program behavior always determined? 
It's true uh, that code almost invariably acts on data, and it usually will have some level of conditionality allowing it to change its behavior depending on the data that it's looking at. But that's just the data that's being looked at right now, and the things that are being done to it have been explicitly programmed by the coder who created the program in the first place. By contrast, with machine learning, the things that are being done to your data now are things that have previously been distilled out of a large body of other data, learned, <coughs> and then they can be uh, applied to the data at hand. Crucially, the coder does not need to have been able to set out in detail, explicitly, step by step, what it is that should be done, and indeed may not need to uh, understand exactly how to do the thing at all. In its simplest form, this isn't much more than basic statistics. If you know that 95% of your users are cat lovers, then when they upload a photo of a very animal, the chances are that it's a cat. If they are dog lovers, it's more likely to be a dog. You might want to sell them balls and puppy treats. If they're music fans, you might want to sell them music. If they're sports fans, you might want to sell them tickets to the game. If they are obsessive Star Wars fans, you might want to sell them Jar Jar Binks toys. This seems like rudimentary stuff, but asking stuff to buy things that are very similar to stuff they bought before um, has taken Jeff Bezos to, or at least close to, space. And there's a continuum from this kind of basic knowledge of your audience to more complex data-driven modeling. As a considerably less trivial example, we might look at something like face recognition. The human visual system is extremely good at recognizing faces, the fact that they're present at all, and also who they belong to. We are social animals tuned by millions of years of evolution to be good at recognizing potential friends, potential enemies. Being able to do so has a strong evolutionary advantage. How this works, for the most part, like how most things in the brain work, is pretty opaque. We understand a few details of it, but not very much. We do know that there are multiple regions of the brain which are dedicated to this task because it is so important. We don't have to think about doing it. It happens automatically without any kind of conscious intervention. And in fact, we mostly don't understand how we do it. If you had to explain uh, how you were recognizing faces, you might hand wave about uh, hair lines and eyebrow shape and bridges in the nose and the shape of the mouth. Um, but this would mostly be a post hoc ra rationalization and also it would be taking place at a very high level where you already have the concepts of eyebrows and hair lines and so on. The thing is that your phone is probably not bad at recognizing faces as well. And this is really quite surprising, given that we don't know how to do it, and phones are a product of human engineering. The way that this works is partly by using techniques that are loosely inspired by things that happen in the brain, that have been discovered by studying neurophysiology, and partly by using clever algorithms that people have come up with for analyzing images. But probably the biggest contributor is that your, the software on your phone has seen an awful lot of faces and has come up with an empirical strategy or a collection of half-baked, jerry-rigged, quasi-strategies that collectively just mostly work. And that it can't explain either. Obviously, the software is artificial, so we can probe it in relentless detail. It's deterministic, so we can understand 
all the decisions that it makes in any particular case, but collectively that doesn't constitute an explanation or an understanding really of how it does it. It just is at too granular a level. This is what we mean by machine learning. It is that parsing out of the tactics for how to solve a problem from the data. But we don't necessarily, or even usually, mean it in an ongoing way. The human experience of learning tends to be slow and incremental and continuing. It's the sort of thing that you're doing in this course right now. If you learn the guitar, the job isn't over when you've learned your first three chords or whatever, the process can go on more or less indefinitely. Whereas for most machine learning applications, this is certainly not always the case, but very commonly the case, the process of learning is a one and done affair. You perform the algorithm, you get the answers, and then that's it, the problem is over. So although there is a logic to this terminology, and we will use it, it doesn't quite mesh with uh, our intuitive understanding. It carries unhelpful connotations. This actually is often the case with terminology and machine learning, and uh, occasionally I will point out some more egregious examples, probably with um, this GIF. So we will come back to learning, I promise that, but to begin with, I would like to talk instead in terms of models.